uh, exactly seven o'clock. Hello, Greg. You're just about making it. Exactly seven o'clock. So, uh, welcome to the annual meeting of the parish council, which we have to hold once a year in May. Um, the agenda always has a lot of extra stuff on it for this meeting once a year. And the first item necessarily is for elected chairman and for the chairman to sign a declaration of acceptance of office. The previous chairman, if in attendance, as I am, always chairs the election of a new chairman. Can I ask for nominations of a chairman, please? I'd like to nominate Mr John Newton, chairman. Thank you. Would someone like to second? Yes, I'm happy to. Colin will second John Newton. Are there other nominations of a new chairman? No. <sighs> okay. As councillors are aware, I've made it clear I didn't wish to stand again for the avoidance of doubt. So um, we have one nomination of John Newton and duly seconded. Can I have a vote, please, on that? Who is in favour? Is anybody against? That does seem as though you are duly elected. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Not too much you have to tie on with the next bit, which is the right chair. Yes, we will. Right, I should go and sit in a warm seat. service I believe it's something like eight years in post and I couldn't be happier about the state of affairs in Wittisham that I'm inheriting from him and um, I, I feel that it should be minuted that we the parish council are extremely grateful for all the hard work he's put in. Um, I know because I encountered uh, Roger this morning that he'd just like to say a word or two as a member of the parish. That now or long? I should say now. Right, well, cool. uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to say a few words um, on behalf of myself and Valerie, and I hope on behalf of many other Wittgenstein residents as well. And the reason for us attending this evening is to say an enormous thank you to your predecessor as he hands over the reins to you for all he did as chairman during his many years in that office. He's done more for this village than many would realise. And the time and effort he has expended in making sure the job was done, it was done well, are prodig prodigious. I think it's fair to say that many of us could learn from his sense of commitment and dedication. The appointment as chairman brings with it the need to deal with controversy, to have a deep knowledge of the vagaries and sometimes the sheer contradictions that exist in the rules and regulations. Councillor Smith's never called him that before, but Councillor Smith's conscientiousness ensured that he had always delved deeply into these often abstruse areas. And even if there was disagreement about the decisions that were subsequently made, there was no doubt the research into the whys and wherefores had been impeccably carried out. He managed to ensure that Wittisham had an influential voice in the Ashford Council affairs, and as chairman of Calc, he made sure that we were in the forefront we were in the forefront of what was being proposed and planned. We would also like to record our thanks to Nula for her support of her, her husband. The time he spent immersed in borough council activities must have been decidedly wearing at times. <laughs> so 
So no more needs to be said except to reiterate our gratitude to Jeremy and then to wish you, Mr Chairman, every success in your new appointment. Thank you well so said. much. Well said. Well said. Well said. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is to elect a vice chairman. Could I have a proposer for the vice chairmanship? Am I allowed to propose myself? I think that's right. You can. Uh, well, Alan Lloyd Smith has kindly offered, and I would propose him as vice chairman. Any second that? Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. And uh, all in favour? Aye. Aye. <coughs> yes. Alan apologises sincerely for his absence tonight on a, on a family matter that we quite understand um, and will be along in, in the future, of course. Um, Yvonne, any apologies for absence? Yes, obviously, as a councillor, um, Alan Lloyd Smith, and our borough councillor, John Shelton, he has something that's come up at short notice. He did intend to attend. <coughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Item four is the usual declaration by members if they have any interest of any sort in a matter that we're going to discuss that they should declare. No. 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 Um, and then we've got this one to approve or reject any application put to the meeting by the chairman in respect of members seeking dispensation under the Localism Act. And I have nothing to say on that point. Um, and the last item under item 4 is just to remind everybody here uh, that this meeting is being recorded uh, and will be published on YouTube in due course for those who wish to recap. So now we open the session to members of the public who are here. Um, if you would like to talk for up to three minutes on any particular topic that is coming up for discussion, uh, I think maybe the gentleman on the right who I was yep. chatting to has a few words to say, so do, could you identify yourself? And yeah, hello, so I am uh, Max Wood, I'm a resident down at 41 The Street, um, near the church, um, for a planning application to consider, um, which you may well recognise as it's almost identical to a previous application that you considered not so long ago. Um, the only real difference in this one is that the previous one was an amendment to conditions Whereas this is a standalone um, application listed by the consent. Um, the general gist of it is that the previous owners of the house did a lot of works inside and out and applied for the commission re retrospectively. Um, the council accepted the majority of the works um, with the condition that the windows at the rear of the property, which had been changed to double glazing, were changed back to singles. When we purchased the property, we consulted a planning agent regarding the matter, and they advised us it may well be worth to put an application in on the basis of environmental grounds and ongoing financial um, implications for us if we remove the double glazing, considering it's already there, um, which we did, um, and that was the previous application that's been considered. That one was um, refused on the basis that it was an amendment to the condition the application was an amendment to the condition, and they had to con take into consideration the previous planning officer's uh, thoughts on the matter, and so they were quite restricted on what they could um, consider, or so we were told. So we put in a new application, which is a standalone application, which we fleshed out a little bit more with EPC, current ratings and predicted ratings with removal of single glazing. So that's the one that's in process now. Um, yeah, I don't really know how to um, flesh out any more. Yes. So in, sort in of effect, you're, you now are complying with what the planners ultimately require, having discussed matters with them. So. Correct, yeah. So the sort of um, middle ground that we came to with them is there's two windows, which are the downstairs bathroom and the upstairs bathroom, which are slightly different profiles um, to the other ones, which are sort of more fitting with a casement style window. All of them are double glazed. Um, so the middle ground we tried to come with them to with them is to change the two bathroom windows, change the profiles on them to make them slightly more slimlined, 
um, so that they're in keeping with the other windows at the rear of the property. Um, so, yeah, so we're, we're not saying we're not going to change anything, but we're sort of saying we can't come to some sort of compromise uh, with the council. So, yeah. Hi. Would anyone like to comment at all on, on this? Can I just be clear in that then, yeah. uh, Matt? You, what you've put in for now, obviously you're hoping to get, but it will, if you get it, involve changing the double glazing for different double glazing in some parts. Right? Um, no, I believe it's just the profile of the the windows, and I think um, <coughs> I'd actually have to have a look through. We may we may, may well have said that we'd change it to the slimline option. The one that is on that is quite is quite chunky, but again not visible until we are close to it. Um, but I'd have to actually look through our our room. And you will be able to keep double glazing if this is approved. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the reason you've got two EPCs in the application is with with what it is and what it would be if you mm -hmm. went back to single glazing. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, well thank you. Nothing. That's no problem. Sorry, Colin. No. Carry on. Yeah. No, nothing. Thank you. No, no time. Well, obviously, that's very useful yeah. to have you to explain to us. It will be coming up later in our Perfect. meeting. I'm okay to stick around. Say, I'm okay to stick around, yeah. Stick around? Well, okay, so that's great. Um, anyone else in the <coughs> audience have any particular topic that they want to talk to or about? There we go. Yeah, okay. Um, I see that you have these dog waste bins on the agenda. Um, I have missed a few parish council meetings, so I may not be up to speak exactly what is happening. But I do wish to express concern that the bins that were on the Memorial Garden, the Green Queen, as it were, um, were actually purchased with money that I raised personally, which I gave to the Parish Council to buy those bins. And the fact that they've disappeared without um, any trace, as far as I can see, I'd like an explanation, please, as to where they've gone um, and whether they will be returned. <laughs> All to do with the new West contract. Ashford Borough Council didn't consult anyone. I had a big thing about that, and they should have come to Clark's at least to discuss this. But their policy now is to remove all dog waste bins, replace them with ordinary bins because people can use those ordinary bins. They can use their own wheelie bins because it all goes to the same place. So they don't need separate ones. What they said when I, I mean, I wrote, got rather cross uh, with them over this, they said that where there was a bin nearby, a little bin nearby, they would have just been removed. If there wasn't a litter bin nearby, they would replace them with their own new litter bins, which is obviously what's happened up there. They, they took yours, they took ours, and if you may remember going right back, we purchased all the ones. Going back to 2012, when we purchased those, it, they agreed to empty those three. Since then we've had, well, you know, to go back to 2003 when we got the first ones, but when we had the caretaker scheme, we took over emptying all the dog bins. As far as Ashford are concerned, they had agreed three. So they only removed the three, one at Ewan Lamb and the two in the street. The other ones that we've purchased since, they had left, luckily. But they did remove your two as well. Um, I took it up with John Shilton and I said they either reimburse or they replay, you know, give them back. Um, they agreed in the end, without coming back to me, they did it all through Johnny, to give us back the two, only the two, because obviously there's one at the village, there's a little bin at the village green, and one's on the, um, but there's one by hip that all will end up there. So they weren't going to replace that one. Unfortunately, because the one that they took from down by the church, there isn't room to put one of their ordinary ones, they weren't going to do anything with that. So we were just going to be completely without. Johnny carried, I said, Johnny took it on, and they returned two of the bins. They left them by the village hall. However, they'd wrecked, when they took them off the post, they wrecked, wrecked all the fittings. So we couldn't actually 
reuse them. We had in the meantime, because we didn't think we would ever get them back, we purchased two new ones. One that will go um, up near the village green where the one used to be between there and here, and one down by the church, which Uncle has already put in place, so we've got that one. In fact, it's nearer the cemetery, which is better mm. for those that use, use the path. Mm. So yes, that's the story behind it all, Miriam, and I totally agree with you. It, it was just atrocious, and the way they just did it without So just asking. to be clear, because the, the one on the coronation field as well that I, I, I gave the money to purchase that one, so it actually is in the street. Yes, did that one get taken too? Um, the one on the coronation field, the larger bin? No, that still, no. That was, if it was an ordinary bin, they wouldn't have removed it. But it was an ordinary bin. All three were ordinary bins. They weren't dog bins. They were green, green ordinary, yes. ordinary bins. Yes. So they had got no reason to remove them. They were never purchased as dog bins. And Quite in fact, if they allow them to be used for dog waste, I think it's pretty disgusting. Mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, I mean, that is their policy. Um, but, I mean, that is fair. They have yeah, that's what I said. That that don't belong to them, yep. which I actually gave the money to the parish yep. council in good faith, right? And so I would personally like to know the person who dealt with this financial right from personally. They should reimburse the parish council for the cost of those bins. I would um, like to have a name and didn't get any names whatsoever. They didn't reply to any of my... Um, so it will be you know. a street seat and open space that's then presumably That's what I went to, yeah. Okay, well I'll, I'd like to take that up. Yes, yeah, so that would be up. Um, yeah. I think it's totally Excellent. unacceptable. Mm. A lot of effort went into raising the money for those bins, mm. and they were in perfectly good condition. Mm. They'd been well looked after, um, and they could have served as well. Mm. So they should they should refund the money. Yeah. I'm sure that we'll be able to find out exactly how much they cost. And they will have some records, and I'm sure the parish council will have records anyway. <coughs> how much? And they should reimburse it. So I'll take that up. Thank yeah. you for that clarification. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Miriam. I've got a feeling that dog waste is going to feature on my agenda list many times in the years to come. Yeah. Um, uh, anybody else would like to say anything about your battery? Right um, well, thank you very much. Now, we go into a private session in the sense that we do the discussing and you're welcome to listen to what is said. Um, so the first item on our <coughs> agenda number five is to confirm the minutes of uh, the last meeting. Um, and these minutes are published on the Village Notice Board as well. And the Notice Board's <coughs> and the website. And the website. Yes, they will well. go on to my morning. Um, so, any councillor have anything to comment? I've made a small alteration. Yeah. And the uh, working party, working party report, public rights of way. Is there a word missing? Does it say not be possible to resurface as it's walked a lot? Should do. Mm. Well spotted, well read. Well, I thought it made sense without the knot. Yes, I, will, I was only going to report this exactly what I've just said, so if you're all happy with mm. what I've just said. Uh, James. Oh. Um, just a thought in my mind, uh, listening to what Mrs Lewis said, which is very compelling. Perhaps we ought to, if not tonight, maybe tonight, or maybe have in mind for the future, that if we can't get a proper restitution from Ashford, then the parish council actually ought to put back what Mrs Lewis had originally contributed towards simply taking it on, on behalf of the parish, as it were, rather than her own fundraising. 
So we get back to where we should be and that she should be, one way or another. We get it from Ashford if we can, if we can't, we do it ourselves. So we have to go short of the no, little bins that she helped us. As you're putting bins back? Where she had them. We've got, li we've big, we've got the big litter bins there. Mm. They're all okay, are they? Well, they're big litter bins. I mean, I don't think they look right there at all. But okay, mm. but they did put them in? Yes. Okay, all right, my misunderstanding. Mm. So long, yeah, as, so long as we're not missing out what Mrs. Lewis contributed to. No, no, we still got them. They're just okay. obviously not. It's just the big ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next item, the Swan update. I'm making this a bit of a personal crusade, as most of you will know. I did head up the Save the Swan campaign originally, and uh, as Jenny and I are moving to the centre of the village, we really want to try to see the swan continue to exist in some form or another. On the back of this, I've had two long conversations with Kevin, the uh, publican, who some of you may remember from the last meeting, um, expressed his views quite forcefully. Um, you know, I, I think we understand each other. I understand his position, and uh, he realises that we want to try to see a, a swan up and running in the future. Um, the reality is that he tells me that uh, the swan will close in June, which is not very far off. Um, and I'm not suggesting we can find a solution within that period, but we can work at trying to find a solution uh, beyond that time, perhaps. Um, I've asked him to put in writing to me the terms under which he would sell it, and we know that. Currently, it was 6.50, it's now 5.95, I think. Mm -hmm. um, or lease it. Um, there's been a possible interest that I found through Ray, um, as you'll all know, the ex publican, of somebody who might be interested in taking a lease. Um, <coughs> I'm pretty skeptical, I have to say, about either solution an easy answer to either solution because uh, Kevin has invested a lot of money in that part, far too much for really, most people's opinion um, and he wants to see his money back in some form or another um, and even if he doesn't need the capital sum in full which I don't think he particularly does at the moment although he's developing as you probably know another part down in right um, He's he's not going to he's not going to allow it what he would describe as a cheap option. You know, he he's got money invested there. Um, I I genuinely think that he, he would he wouldn't mind seeing the thing up and running as a pub. I don't think, uh, having spoken to him, that, that there was always an underlying motive to run the place into the ground and then go for the planning permission for building, which is what's often been suggested. Um, and as I say, I, I haven't op I've opened a really genuine channel of communication, so that is a good thing. Um, I, I'm thinking possibly that I might put out some kind of appeal um, Know, advising people of the current situation and um, looking for someone to help to find a way out of it to, to us, but we can talk about that in due course. But just as an update, as I say, we're going to lose that pub probably in June, um, and um, I can't think of any particularly fair, fairy godmother at the moment who's going to come out of the work and pay him his asking price. Um, and um, I, I suspect that if somebody uh, wants to discuss with him uh, taking a lease on the pub, that they wouldn't be able to entertain the kind of <coughs> that he would be looking for. Uh, he's been very open about the takings. You know, we're now beyond the stage of arguing whether or not he's made a good fist of running the pub, he's chose, chosen to run it in a specific way that doesn't suit the population of Wittersham. I think he realises that, 
um, food is the absolute key to, to getting that place into any anywhere near profitability. Um, and in my view, it needs probably a husband and wife to live there and want to do cooking and things because finding a chef these days is is very difficult and very expensive. So that's where, where we are. But if anybody knows of anybody or has any connection who might be interested in getting involved, um, then obviously I'd be very interested to hear of it and uh, we'll pass that on to Kevin. Um, any counsellor with anything else to say? Well, I'm, I'm the fairy godmother for the Jews, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but thank you very much for the update and I think it would be useful to maybe put a short piece in the outlook or something. Because That's what I was saying. Because, because rumours run all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're absolutely spot on. The, the, that sort of pub, it's absolutely vital that it serves food and preferably seven days a week. And there are pubs in a not too uh, far away location that are working flat out seven days a week and you need to book up in, a, in advance. I'm not just talking about Ronald and Lane, but, but some of the other ones in, in, in the area. And it's it's right at the, the you know at, at the heart of, of, of the village historically, um, so uh, I think uh, it would be a great shame if nothing happens there. Right. Um, so and I think I think despite Kevin's particular approach to maybe voicing his views publicly, um, I think the only way to get anything successful is to open up a sensible adult conversation with him, and I fully support that. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Anything else? Do they live there? Do they live there? Kevin and Georgia? Is it on the premises? Is she allowed to sit? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> ask me, ask me later. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Pillow talk. Cool. Um, next item in the cemetery planning application. Um, Jeremy, this has been a particular concern of yours. Uh, are we any further forward? I know no more of it at all. Um, we ha Well, sorry, uh, I suppose in a way I do because it's a month since we were here. Um, Ashford have asked now that they get a biodiversity statement, which I think has to be done by a qualified person, to explain how um, the planning application, if granted, would add 10% to the biodiversity of the area. I had a very, um, a very quick peripheral look online as to what came up with huge templates and whatever, whatever. The rules have only just come in. Um, I, I honestly, I don't know the best way to, to approach it. It's, um, I find it, exceptionally irritating. Um, we had, um, as uh, some of you may know, we had the um, one of the specialists from the AOMB area, now the, whatever it is, National Landscapes Office in Flimwell, came along and looked at it with us and said the cemetery will be far better for biodiversity than the apple orchard next door. Um, but that's not the way the rules work. The rules say, well, you can only go back to when the rules came in, which is a matter of weeks. So it is either it's cemetery versus grass. Now, I think with the hedge being um, laid, the person I'm talking about again said the hedge will be very good. It will provide a, a channel for, you know, for um, you know, insects or animals or whatever, yeah. rather than the wildlife, rather than the open land. That will all be good. But saying, as is obvious to all of us, that a hedge is better than open grassland, um, that doesn't count unless an expert says the same thing and can say that they've got the right letters or whatever. I mean, so it's utterly ridiculous. It is utterly ridiculous. To this extent. Or, I mean, stupid. might I suggest possibly that we might progress things unilaterally and at the end of the day, you know, a, a retrospective planning commission, if necessary. Works like people. <laughs> well, exactly. But it it's, it's, should be a de minimis, something like this, shouldn't mm. It's just too small an issue that for, to involve an, yet another consultant, yet yeah. another substantial Just adds fee. another thousand pounds or something to add cost. And they get something off the word <coughs> processor. And, yeah. mm. cool. Do we have a 
Is there a, a named contact at Asher Borough Council who has this biodiversity portfolio or brief or whatever it's called? The, um, the, uh, the person who's got a green portfolio or something along those lines, last I heard, unless it's changed, is the member for Wolverhampton who is a member of either the Asher Independence or the Greens or something yeah. of those sort. Um, I did, by the way, um, take advice from uh, someone else who I thought would have uh, knowledge of these things and, and might suggest what we might do. And the only line really that I got there was, make a fuss. But the trouble is that planners are very um, immune to a fuss. Mm -hmm. um, they are doing a, what they will regard as a quasi-judicial job. Uh -huh. And um, I mean, unless, it, unless they're overruled in the planning committee, they tend to try and stand their, mm -hmm. their ground, however. I mean, I could see this one running on well, for further years. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, something's got to be well, done. Given that, we've, yeah. given that we've had an expert opinion, yeah. if you like, from yeah. the yeah. AONB, yeah. uh, that person, mm -hmm. if we could get a, mm -hmm. some note in writing, I think it's uh, it's an unusual situation. There aren't many cemeteries that are looking to extend, yeah. and there certainly aren't many burial authorities in parishes in the ABC's um, sure. area. Sure. I think it's um, uh, it's not here to disagree, but I think it's ideal if we get that information to pass it to our borough, our, sorry, our ward, our ward councillor, to Johnny, uh, and, and in the meantime we we get on with it because. Um, you know, the, the need has been proven. Mm -hmm. The clerk did the, the numbers five years ago. Mm -hmm. We all agreed with it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the idea of, of doing this uh, in parallel, shall we say, is, is mm -hmm. the most sensible way forward. We, we did uh, put about the AOMB unit, as I recall, mm -hmm. in the design and access statement yes. that went yeah. down. Yeah. I, I think our problem, and it's a sort of administrative silliness, at the minute is that they've refused to verify the application mm. because it hasn't got the biodiversity mm. statement. So we're not even having a problem mm. with our planning application, mm. we're having a problem with them being unwilling to agree that we've made a planning application. There's one other thing, when I read it all, I ticked the box where we don't need this because from what I could see, mm. it wasn't applicable. Yeah. But we only put what the buyer said, we didn't actually have information no, no, what the it's, it's, in the application. It's whatever, they've got to tick this box that says, mm. and they haven't got that, or they've got our words, you know. Mm. So it's, why don't we get a biodiversity one page you written? And because if, if, if whoever's looking at this in the planning office is going through a tick box yeah. exercise, mm -hmm. they get into item X. Where's the state? Yeah. Haven't got one. Yeah. So, yeah. People, so why don't we just provide them with one? I think it has to be done by a qualified person of some sort. Yes, it's very complicated. You want to look to be a lot more than I have. Well, they should have a list of qualified we people then, because if they don't, they won't be able to know whether the person. Not. So I would <laughs> ask. I would ask them for the list of qualified people, and uh, because you can't possibly make a judgment in the planning office if you haven't got a list of who qualified people or, or organisations are. I, I, you know, I'm essentially a pragmatist, and I would just get on with yeah. it, and, and we'll face the music. Unfortunately, no, yes. no, probably not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was doing, I was doing this in parallel with you. Yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well, I can, you know, I, I can just see that whatever we do, or. You know, either it's going to cost us whatever it might, fifteen hundred pounds in consultants' fees, and they'll then accept it for consideration. That doesn't mean to say they'll necessarily agree it or not change it. Most of the big, most of the planning applications that are done, but you know, more than one single house or something, always have a biodiversity statement in them. Uh, and someone must be writing them, and they must be accepted by Ashford. So well, that must change. This is the problem. There's a change. But, that change. Isn't, but, that, but you won't see all planning applications suddenly cease, will you? So it's, not, it's, a, it's a hurdle to get over. Yeah, sure. So we, to all know. we have to do is to find... There's an example. I should have said this, by the way. What I found, I don't know if you saw the same thing, there appears to be an exemption for householders. What, alive or dead? <laughs> householders. And I think maybe even not just one house, but up to sort of five or ten or something. It basically, they're going to do all the big houses, big house builders, for this. 
and presumably other things. And, and one of our problems being the change of use for cemetery is that we're always in sui generis, where we just are not under yeah. any of the headings, we're just something else. Yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think we're being swept in, despite your tick, into the group that they want us to be in, which is, oh, you've got to have one. Which is their easy option. I do right. just wonder, and I'm only thinking out loud, um, Paul's made, made an interesting point. Um, we don't know, for argument's sake, that the person who's got to do this statement has got to be a biodiversity consultant. It may be, for example, that one of the people in the AONB unit, I'm sorry, National Landscape, whatever, um, actually is, for argument's sake, a chartered ecologist and can come along and say, blah, 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 all very good, signed chartered ecologist. And they are then not saying, well, I have to make a thousand pounds a go just to pay my my mortgage, because they're already employed. Yeah. Well, could you possibly look into it, Jeremy? I could ask let's, for that. Let's try and find the seed for oh, that's, that's, we should should find that's a way forward, yeah. possible way forward. Because if we're planting a hedge and things like that, we'll want everything in place for the autumn yes. winter planting season. <clears throat> yes. Otherwise, we'll miss an Have you got this far? Hmm. Okay, that's all on that. Now we're talking about the appointment of members of the council to existing working parties. First one, uh, the, the, Yvonne and I have discussed Mount Lion, and, and we've perhaps talked to one or two people about this, and there's some existing members of these teams. So, would you like to, to finish caretaker? The suggestions are. Chairman? And Jeremy, as. Myself and Jeremy. Yes. Um, Billy, you're happy with that? Yep. Other members of the council. Seems to be fine. Finance. The same thing. Finance, same thing. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Open spaces. So, historic connection. It was Alan before. He did say. Yeah, I think he's he's, 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 he's quite happy. In a mood to agree with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fine. Highways. I'm happy to carry on doing that. Oh, oops. No. Highway is all. PROW, that's something that you're involved in, Tom. Well, Sally really was Sally. Sally's the last time. Are you happy to have you? Yeah. So. Thank you, Sally. And Cemetery Sue. Great, thank you very much. Uh, item 8, two representatives to attend cult meetings. Currently, that would be Jeremy and myself. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Oh, now, a slightly more difficult item. It's a representative of the Village Hall Management Committee. Um, there's a reluctance, I understand, um, because of the open-ended responsibilities. Um, so, do I assume that there, there are no volunteers currently to take that role? Uh, it would seem so. We, it needs to be discussed. I, Yvonne was saying that the chairman of the committee is now up and running again. Is that right? Yes. I don't know. But Mike Apps. Mike Apps. Mike Apps. Mike Apps. Mike Apps. Um, shall we make contact with him and just try and clarify the situation a bit more? The, um, fact, the fact that he has now got his, the opportunity to get his um, hands on it again after a, a period of difficult personal problems may mean that he is now able to address that and see whether that's something they want to do mm. uh, to, to put them on themselves onto a limited uh, um, basis. Mm. As a whatever the city initials are, um, charitable incorporated organisation or something. Yeah. So, um, I think there are, by the way, in um, ACRE action with communities in rural England, had their, I believe, which is the national version of ACRK, as was, I think there's been some work done, so I heard second or third hand to start trying to do templates or 
guides or whatever to help village halls do this as easily as possible. Um, I think part of the issue is whether they can find a solicitor who, because it would have to be a transaction to move the title and therefore they need a conveyancing solicitor who will do it as an easy, cheap job. And so shall we open up a channel of communication with him mm -hmm. see if we can find a mutually agreeable solution? Um, now we're in the really interesting part of the meeting. Re review the standing orders. Um, as a new boy anyway, I have read the standing orders myself and can find absolutely nothing to complain about in them. Um, most of you have already served a term or two, so can we consider them reviewed? Then, so know? they were amended in April, yeah. you know, a year ago, yeah. so yeah. They, they are fairly... Yeah. Yeah. They are reasonably new. Yeah. 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 Um, similar matter, the financial regulations, again, I've been through them and I think, as with the rest of the paperwork, it's, it's in pretty good order. Um, in, in that instance, it was a completely right. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, September. and according to the advice that uh, we got, that is within our powers to do. Whereas with the standing orders, it's a little bit more delicate, but the financial regulations, uh, it, as I say, completely right, yeah. which we felt met what we needed. Okay, so we're happy with those. Um, <coughs> The inventory of land assets and office equipment. We had details circulated to us. Yeah. Um, item 12. And uh, Yvonne has explained to me that assets are listed at, uh, at their, the, the price which they were bought, if they were bought, or if they're things like the cemetery at, at one pound. Um, and I just said to uh, her, we don't have them anywhere in the balance sheet at these figures. They're obviously totally no. unrealistic. Mm -hmm. So uh, no, you know, just for information, really. Um, and uh, you update them as we, mm -hmm. if we mm -hmm. buy and add to them. And there is no balance sheet for the parish council. No, no. That's no. not a concept. Yeah, that I understand buys. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's all in order, Jane. Um, arrangements for insurance cover. Uh, that, I think we can probably postpone, can we, till the uh, item yes, 20? Yes, we've got yeah. to discuss it. comes up on mm -hmm. item 20A. Uh, interactions with residents and public. Again, I've read through this. It's actually published, I see, on the village notice board. Mm -hmm. So anybody who, who wants to complain about anything, I, uh, can easily read it there, and it's very readable. Um, so that's fine. Procedures for handling requests made under the Freedom of Information Act. Mm, so that's something that obviously requests come to me. Yes. And I have a book where I put them in and deal with them as they come up, but we haven't had anything recently. No. no. We're comfortable that we know how to do deal with them if they do come up. Council's policy for dealing with press and media, um, that goes back a, a, a while and possibly needs um, Reviewing. A, a review, I think, possibly. Could put it on the agenda for a future. Yes, particularly okay. knowing now the extent to which social media are taking over our lives. Yeah. Um, I think we, we should have some sort of um, policy in, in that area. There is a particular issue for you because the press and media statement gives you the sort of front uh, with yeah. Yvonne to answer, the clerk, to answer particular things that come in from the press, bearing yeah. in mind that the press always wants something straight away and so yeah. that's essentially a, a delegation by the council to you, which is unusual to delegate to a councillor, but in this instance um, there's, there's no real alternative. We don't have a press... Person within you know, a PR person like a, 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 like a borough council does. And as it happens, it very rarely does happen, but at the time of the sinkhole, uh, I was asked to talk to a journalist and I did using the policy as my 
Okay. That was what was my authority. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> fine. Uh, that's again in place, but we will look at it um, for updating. Um, planning applications. Just before we discuss the first one, I just want to revert briefly to the planning application for the the new um, Sand School. I, I don't know if you remember, but there was an issue and some correspondence between Jeremy and the applicant, um, not the applicant, the neighbours, yes. um, because uh, the item had been passed through and approved or whatever, supported by the council largely on the basis that the neighbours had not complained about it. But it turned out that the neighbours didn't even know about it. And then it became complicated because we had to put our uh, information into the council uh, by a certain date and by then there had been some considerable and very well reasoned complaints from the two uh, lordings and uh, park house either side who it will affect considerably. So I, I did walk over there myself and it is the most beautiful site and they are encroaching gradually on it in an equestrian manner um, from a start point whereby this was to be for the family, so to speak, a relatively small development. It now very much looks as though it could be commercialised in due course, which will mean more heavy traffic and, you know, occupying <coughs> this great sand school where obviously people will be riding and chatting and talking and may even lead to an application for lights, which would be horrific. Um, so, so I felt we should show some reservation about, reservation about the approval we had given and Yvonne has put a note into Ashford Borough Council just pointing them in the direction of the complainants um, mm. showing that we've, we've taken note of, of, of that fact. To say what I... Yes, why don't you say what you said? Could I make a point? Yes, of course. Well. Um, I, I read through all of the correspondence um, and I yes. went down there myself and had a look. And the correspondence I read also was um, the 13th of May, um, Simon Cole's detailed um, explanation of, of the planning approval. And one of the things that I was confused about is he's, he's, he's addressed a number of the issues that have been raised in huge detail by some of the residents there. One is at no stage were we led to believe that this was a commercial business being set up. This was a private um, for the family, and that's, it's been approved. It's very, very clear in what Simon has said in his document of the 13th of May. Um, and so whilst... I, I have huge sympathy with residents who are imagining there are going to be hundreds of people and horse riding instructors shouting through the night or day or whatever, and, and uh, the argument was that there's already a commercial riding stables at Cuckoo Cottage. From a planning point of view, I think the planning officer who approved this has been incredibly clear. Um, there are discussions, as he's explained, going on regarding disposal of horse manure. I mean, we do live in a rural community and there are quite a few horses around. Um, I, I think that the issue of, of, of the temporary um, metal shipping container um, is, is what well, we've got an example just very near you. Uh, no one seems to have worried about that, which is very have. <laughs> well, yeah, it's yeah. right on the road there. But the point about it is, notwithstanding, I'm not saying that people shouldn't voice their opinions, and the fact was that it was a very narrow window of opportunity, but that's not the parish council's fault or responsibility, that lies clearly with Ashford Borough Council, yeah. um, but there seems to be an awful lot of um, uh, uh, views being put forward that have, all, have now been addressed by Ashford Borough Council very clearly, and uh, uh, there is no planning permission for a full-blown um, seven-day-a-week commercial venture there, um, and from the point of view you know, it, 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 it's, it's understandable that any building that's put up, but we do live in an agricultural community and it's not a house, it's an agricultural building. I went down there and I thought, that's a pretty good job they've done. 
Uh, they've, done, they've complied with all the entrance where they had to move the whole entrance yeah. back or what have you. Well, that was for the original yeah. one. This new application was for the menage that they want to put in behind where the barn is. So it's not that it's so a it's different menage? It's completely menu. different. So it's a new planning application? So it's, yes, that's what this is. Oh, that's well, I beg your pardon. I just read Simon yeah. Cole's Yes, report. that was the previous one. Right. So, so we're now on to a new one, which right. is indicating that it's a much bigger thing than was first agreed with the application. No, not the letter about. is the approval for this application. For this one? No, it's been approved. That's what I understood. That's, that's, why, that's, why, why, that's, that's why we rushed it through up. last time, because it yeah, was going, to be, it it's going to be decided before tonight. That's why we had to rush mm. it last time. Mm. It just came in on the yeah. point yeah. of us doing the agenda. Yeah. I just think that... So, you know, so there are two planning applications. Yeah. Yeah. The first one for these stables yeah. and the second one for the non. But they've been approved? They've both been approved. Yes, that was my understanding. Right, sorry, Paul. Mm. Mm. So, and I thought actually, you know, for, for, for a planning explanation, it was actually one of the more clear-cut ones, or, or, you know, transparent ones. Mm. Right, I think just instinctively what you feel this is creeping creeping development effectively of, of an agricultural site. Um, and there, there, there are aspects of it, mm -hmm. and I think the traffic, the increase in traffic that's bound to result is something that... But the problem is, the problem is, I can't understand who is going to be driving these vehicles apart from Lee and his family, because it's private usage, it's for them, maybe one or two of their friends, yeah. but given the amount of traffic that goes past my house and peeling quarter, we're going to be talking about adding maybe two cars a week or something here. It, it's, it's, it's not a commercial operation. Uh, it's very clear they can't have the lighting mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. you know, polluting the, the... I mean, there are a number of houses around here that you can see from down yeah. small high that pollute the, the night sky, where we tried to have a dark sky mm -hmm. uh, initiative. And, and it's very clear the planning authority said no to, to that. Um, I don't see where... I can't see where the hordes of cars are coming from because they're not going to be going in there. Well, you're not talking cars, you're talking horse boxes, and you're talking seven horses that are there already. Yeah, but they're not all going to be going in and out all the time. We've got, we've got stables up at, um, uh, at so Gail's place, yeah. you know, and, and I, so I just think there's a, there's a gap between... I understand people's concerns. I'm not suggesting that for one minute they shouldn't have the right to say that, but there's a difference between concern and reality. And, and I think that from a planning regulation point of view, I, I, I can't see anything that's been done incorrectly. They're very clear that this is not going to be allowed to be a commercial operation. Um, well, you wait and see and see whether any enforcement is ever well, taken. Well, I, no, I, that's, that's fine. But I think that we, I mean, I think in the past we've always made a point of having to consider applications, on, particularly on the, on the planning regulations. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I, th I think that the issue turns here, or seems to turn here, on the usual planning question, which is the, ba the planning balance between the right of the person who owns the bit of land and the right of the person next to it, or indeed the public, who, you know, who have the effect on the street scene or whatever. This happens to be a very nice piece of street scene. <clears throat> and we found a balance last time to say, well, rather your point, Paul, we're living in the country, it's an agricultural thing to have horses, there's nothing terribly exceptional about that, they've got stables, so what's the issue? And by the way, the neighbours don't have a problem, so why would we? And actually, the neighbours had a very big problem, and that's where it all turned. Mm -hmm. And had we realised the, the nuances, as it were, we might have taken a different view. However, the fact is that with a council, just like with Ashford, you take a decision and that's the decision you've taken. And we are, we are on that hook. It's uncomfortable. I, I feel regretful that we managed to, as it were, for totally understandable reasons, mislead ourselves that the neighbours didn't mind because they didn't come. But they didn't come because they didn't realise they needed to be looking on the notice board and the website and see that it was on the agenda mm. because the post was slow. Mm. Well, <coughs> so we'll, 
we'll see what happens, but it has been approved and so, yeah, yeah, we're not arguing with that. I brought it up, it's... Well, it's it be used. Did they put the oh. usual notice on the post? They did, but not until, I think it was two days before yeah. two the days. original yeah. deadline, yeah. and then the deadline was extended. Yeah. It, got it, it got extended. Yeah. So well, when was it approved? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it says shall be used for private Christian purposes only and not for any commercial riding, livery or other business use. The use of the mat and large sat stroke sand school shall only be in association with the overall use of the site. Um, and the reason for that enable the local planning authority to regulate and control the development of the land and having regard to the visual and residential amenity of the locality. No external lighting shall be installed on the site to serve the approved. So, so, following uh, Jeremy's in interventions at the beginning and advising them, the, the objectors to send stuff into Ashburnborough Council, did that happen? Yes. Yeah, before, the before the 9th of May? Because yeah. that was a dead day, yeah, wasn't it? Definitely, yeah. And Yvonne had put hers in on our behalf to yes. say, we've only just now found out about yes. the neighbours, please yes. take account yeah, of Yeah, and that, that's the point I was going to continue to make, that in fact is to give them time. Sure. sure. Okay, sorry, that was um, a bit extra on the uh, agenda. Um, the first uh, official uh, planning application that we should consider is, just about is at Kingsgate House. Um, the single story rear and front extensions following removal of existing balcony and changes to fenestration. Um, again, I don't know if anybody has got any particular thoughts on this one. We've got another one coming out that I think is a bit more controversial. But, um, no. No, I don't think it's no, going no, to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So support, it. support that one. Mm -hmm. um, yep. We've then got Matt's. Uh, 41 Street, he's explained the issues, and in my view, we should support what they're currently doing. Agreed. Agreed. Sure. Excellent. <coughs> um, now, this Kingsgate one, um, I looked at it in some detail this afternoon, and um, effectively, they're, they're building a new house. Mm. Yes. On, on yeah. Virgin Land, so to speak. So, I think we should think seriously about objecting to, to this because just because of that fact, really, they're trying to disguise it and yeah. suggesting that it's necessary for the staff, effectively, or the estate manager, as they put it, and I'm not aware that Kingsgate actually possesses an estate that's large enough to require a manager. Years ago, and many years ago, they did have a cottage on the side of yeah. the main house, mm. yes, it's still there. and that was for one of the workers yeah. in, on, on right. the estate, okay. as they call it, yeah. Sure. And that's obviously now been incorporated into the main house, mm -hmm. and the plans are seen today. Mm. Okay, so, so, so that's, that's no particular sad. argument for them to have another mm. brand new house, mm -hmm. effectively. Um, they're not here to argue their case. Um, any, any councillors feel strongly that we should support it at all? I, I looked through the thing, the, the, the application in detail as well, and, and I was a bit confused as, as, as who the applicant was. Yeah. Um, because uh, there's an agent mentioned, and then under the applicant, that's filled in, and it says, are you the agent? And they said yes. So, yeah, um, well, there's the owner's name first. Yes, so. it's, it's a, a city... No. Oh, it's just yes. me not understanding yeah. it. Fair yeah. enough. Okay, so the, the name of the person who's on there is actually the owner and the resident and, and what have you. I can't remember the name now. Um, That's the name. Uh, is it David? Mr. Wise. Wise. Yes, David. David. Okay. Right. One of these curious cases. Um, I think, no, I, I, I looked at it and I thought, okay, so from a planning point of view, um, given it's not in the uh, village envelope, okay? But given the huge encouragement over the years, if that's the right word, from, from National Borough Council for infilling, I thought, well, it's, it's down a private track and it can't be seen by any, any member of the public, mm -hmm. apart from people who live down a private track. Uh, the design of it is in keeping very much with the existing building. Um, I don't know whether or not there's a, there's a usage, um, but given the um, recently published um, 
high wheel air and B document that Yvonne has encouraged us all to read from cover to cover, mm -hmm. where where they are resisting removal of agricultural workers' <coughs> Thai, Thai cottage status. Uh, I wondered if that might be um, not reversed but applied to this. In other words, that if it was approved, one of the conditions would be that it was tied to an agricultural mm -hmm. worker or to the estate worker. So that would restrict it <coughs> to coming onto the open market. Um, uh, and it's in their garden, so it's sort of infilling. So well, it's almost on their front door. I'm mean, not it, sure you'd want it on the open market. Well, yeah, but, 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 I, but, but I, I, I talked to myself that from, from a planning point of view, yeah. you know, the, from a design point of view, personally, I couldn't fault it. That's always a subjective piece. Mm -hmm. It is all the listing of the, of the, the materials used. Um, so it's a difficult one there. I, I, I don't feel inclined to automatically object to it. Um, I think that it's in keeping, it's not visible from the public, it's not going to spoil the views, and in the AOMB, how, how will the AOMB document, that's a very important piece that's, that's looked at. Um, and uh, I suppose the argument is that, you know, once they build one, they could build 10 or 20 or 30, but the fact is that we should, I don't believe, consider that. I think it should be considered on its own merits. Um, and I can't see a reason to object to it to object to it, personally, providing we put the recommendations of certain conditions, and it is, I don't know how practical that is these days, but it is tied to uh, employer of said estate working in a, I don't know, an ag a rural or agri agricultural capacity, I think that's worth mentioning. I think they're more that's generous more. than I am, I, I consider oh, well, that their reasons are possibly spurious, and that it's just an attempt. It's a shame they're not to, here. To build what's effectively a new house in, you know, we'd all like a new house. No doubt if we had enough land to put, put one on. But, but then how can people who see build a carport with a room over the top only five years later to... Becomes a problem. Yeah, yes. change it. Yeah. Mm. Well, at least they're doing it up front and in one yeah. country. It is, as, as Sally already said, it is almost out in front of their front door. And, and in a sense, you know, we think of neighbours, the only neighbour it's going to affront is themselves. Um, it, it, it is really placed in a slightly odd position, actually, I thought. Um, my normal inclination would be actually quite close to Paul's, but I, I think that unless it's sort of affecting neighbours or the street scene, it's usually up to them. Other than, and you put your finger on a new house, we'd certainly be keen not to allow it to be severed from the main house. And it's so close to it, it hardly could be. Mm. So, um, I'm not sure if you could see it from Kingsley Farm. Mm. I don't know, I don't know. Them very Which much is the there. property that built the spa and treatment centre and treatment rooms? Is that a different property? Because there was one down there, wasn't there, about five years ago? Yeah, this is Kingsgate. I think this is the one that has a, a, an application about every nine months, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> was, was, was it that property? I think the it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's... We've had all one of them just there anyway. There's only four houses down there anyway, aren't there? Down the bottom. Oh, the new one. Yeah, that's that bit. Yeah. Which they, they built recently as well. Mm. Within the last... Mm. Yeah, is the other building over a bit sort of more towards the northwest? Is that one we're talking about? Yes. yes. Yeah. So I, I think it, it was almost as though they stuck it near the house so that it wasn't too near the other place. <laughs> well, we must try and be objective, I suppose, mm. in these mm. matters. Um, how about Sally, Sally and Sue? Any particular pros or cons? I have to admit, I thought it was rather large and why they needed an enormous double car barn. But having said that, I'm very much along with Paul. As long as we can... I mean, if we think ABC might be seen to support it, then we need to tie it in with the main house. That's what I would say. Yes. Use or use agricultural use. So I'd support yeah, it. Yeah. Use. Okay. With a condition. Mm. Colin, any particular feelings? I'm, I'm not happy. Mm. So I'm going to re reject. 
I think, I mean, the, the planets will have a view, right? Yes. Now, you know, it may be that, that they reject it out of hand, mm. you know, as a, as a potentially a new house in an A or in B. Mm. Um, but that's my view at the moment. Yeah. Paul, you would support? I, I, I think I would support it. Just on balance, Jeremy, with, with conditions. Would I would support it, but I wouldn't pray personally. I wouldn't phrase the condition along the agricultural line, although it's interesting mm. that you pick that bit up from the National Landscapes document. Um, I think it's not severing it from the main house. You know, but but the, but there's a problem there, as we know, on this council, where people break the rules. Yeah for 10 years and then put in for the condition to be removed and they always win it. And we've seen that. Well, in 10 years time, what you see will probably look a very different place. Well, that, that's for good or ill actually, isn't it? <laughs> no, I have two pubs. <laughs> <laughs> we should be so lucky. Um, okay, can, can those who would support it, let me know that they would support. We've got one here, we've got one, yeah. I think, Colin, I think we, sure. we support it. Thank you. With that condition? Uh, yes, in as far as we're able to. So what do you, what do you want? Agricultural use or no. not severing from uh, main house? Both. 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 Mm -hmm. I think each individual part needs to be yeah. considered. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep it as tight as you can. Okay, item 18, the sports club lease update. This, this is another particular interest of mine. Um, and I know with Miriam here, she's very interested in it as well. Um, I've been in touch with Paul, the current chairman, um, and Mervyn, who you all know, I, I know from tennis and cricket in the past. So I've sort of briefed myself roughly on, on what's going on and it's clear that certain issues need to be decided and they have got their AGM coming up on the 30th of this month and I've expressed the fact that the Parish Council are very interested in the upshot of what happens with regard to the lease because it's a major asset of the village and it's absolutely critical that, um, particularly while John Mallet is still alive, uh, hopefully mm. a lease can be signed that gives the village 90 years or more guarantee of continued occupation. So, um, not much more to say really, except that, that I'm determined that they should be aware of the parish council's interest. I shall go, I'm, I'm a sports club member anyway, so I'll go along to the a, AGM uh, and hopefully um, at that, um, I think there may be a new committee constituted or whatever, or not, as the case may be, but we must let the sports club come to their own conclusions on that. And if we can help in any way, then we'd be delighted to do so, yeah. but it's not. Uh, our business at this particular moment. So that's where we are on that one. Um, Can I just mention, I think it's the 29th of the AGM, unless I'm mistaken, and I'm going to have to miss it because I will be at the Calc meeting, which obviously you won't be at. I shall be flying back to Italy on the morning of the right. 30th, which Thursday oh, the 30th. I think it's the 29th. There we are. The 30th. Oh, well, good. Well, <laughs> someone said to me the 29th in you the club on Friday. Oh, yeah. Good. So, 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 in that case, well done, Miriam. Thank you, Miriam. In that case, I can be there. 7 pm on the 30th. Good. Um, fine. Item 19. To consider our response to Ashford's request for the S106 particulars. Are we in a position to? draft a response or to have we decided what we haven't decided uh, that's why it's on the agenda so um, um, how, how how important is the time scale on that right so the last thing we should have said um, obviously the last time we were 
hoping to have ownership of the the land there so that we could have a, a better um, play area, which is what the money was hopefully to go towards, but we're no nearer that than we were then. Uh, she actually, this Annie, Annie, Annie Brown is the open space and landscape officer at Ashford, and it's her job to see this through. Um, and she was aware of that from what she picked up before. Um, she said, for this application there are informal stroke natural provisions on site, so the S106 contributions could be allocated to play, sports and or allotments. Unfortunately, not the pond on this occasion, I've mentioned that before, but I will look at some other opportunities for funding pond restoration. I've asked for a timeline for feedback from the planning department, otherwise I look forward to hearing from you after the 14th, which when I said would be on the agenda to see what councillor said she did suggest originally um, what did she come up with she did mention putting in yes um, as noted the figures are not going to achieve a new play area but I wondered if the parish would consider using the funds to create a year-round accessible path from Woodland View to the existing play area for wheelchair access, as well as helping parents with buckets use the play area. And that was her suggestion at the time. Um, but Jeremy pointed out that that would, wouldn't would help with, if you wanted a play area. Um, from a different place? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I do want to pursue the possible handover of the Ashford land to ourselves. So yes, mm. uh, agreed. If you could I let me have a contact at Ashford uh, in the Estates Department. Is that Jeremy? Mm. Oh, Jeff. Jeff. Jeremy. Mm. 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 Try and dig that out again. Yes. I mean, how well, could we do that? It just, it seems as though, I mean, this is the impression I get, that it's it's a sort of not invented here syndrome. It's not on Ashford's agenda, so all that happens is if I write, which I do periodically, not lately, uh, one way or another to the chief executive with whom it was first discussed, he just gets sent off somewhere to lose again. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have the opportunity to talk to the chief executive and say I stood down. I don't know about that, I'll get a meeting, but I can mm -hmm. at least um, try and raise that issue and say, look, where is this? I mean, if, if it was a reasonable situation, they really ought to feel deeply embarrassed after um, in the year. two years plus, I think. Well, perhaps you could do that, and then let me know, and, and then I'll I'll take over. And perhaps yeah. a new name, new face, new voice might help a bit. I mean, it's a, it's not doing them any harm, but it's just an undertaking, isn't it? And then the legal people will be involved, and mm. goodness knows what. But if we can keep it ticking along. It'd be very good news for the village. I mean, it potentially reduces their liability and cost. And given the fact that they're so strapped for cash, I can't see a reason why yeah. now we wouldn't entertain it. No. The curious thing is that when, um, until now, because of chairing the uh, CALP uh, at Ashford, I've been on the Ashford Grants panel for the last few years, and there has been some government money dispensed lately. Uh, <coughs> to Ashford, uh, I can't remember the amount, but I mean, we were talking a substantial amount of money, mm. and parishes had the opportunity of putting in certain things for it, and there was a whole clutch of play area grants made to the parishes that owned their play area. Mm. 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 That was um, at the last meeting or the one before. Um, you know, we're just uh, in the the unhappy position of being neither here nor there. You know, they they actually said, uh, um, you know, a year or two ago, two years ago probably now, there was no way they were going to spend any money on the pay area. It was not a high priority, and then out of the blue, without us knowing anything about it, they then go and spend some money on the pay area. Mm -hmm. While we're trying to say, look, why don't we put it in the right place mm -hmm. and, and and help you through it? It's a it's a weird situation. They just they just sort of run in their own way. But, I mean, we've no idea of the quantum of, you know, the, the money value of what 
No, this is for no. We might get. I mean, in the past, we always used to get that from the officer yes. concerned, but this time it's. Mm, I don't know. I, no. they, would, they would say, well, you'll have 25,000 or something. It would be a bit more than that, probably, but it depends on the quantum of the houses, and because that's come down from 30 to 20, mm -hmm. then it will be less. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, it would be so much easier. Perhaps to consider <laughs> projects if we knew roughly how much was mm -hmm. made. Um, could, could we, if we've got to make a response, could, could we say that we're still pursuing the handover of the land? With ABC? With ABC, mm. which could influence mm. the projects we consider. But in, in the meantime, um, could we please have an estimate of mm. likely value? to us mm. of the S106 um, grant. Exactly. I think last time from memory we were looking where we were even at about 70,000, 80,000, something like that. Mm. Thanks for coming. Thank you. That's a significant amount. Mm. Um, okay. Item 20, the insurance renewal. This is a very tight market, I understand, yeah. insuring mm. yeah. public bodies. So there's not much you can do to try and drive the price down by competition. And it's gone up fifty pounds from last year. Well, it's late. It's, it's just gone up th year. just fifty pounds. Yeah, a lot less than other insurance. Yes, I'm just, yeah. yes, yeah. I agree. I, I, I would think that no question. We don't want to no. investigate other no. providers on that. Fifty pounds is a deal. Okay, you go with that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Might be him. Yeah. Okay. Um, cult membership. No, that's they're obviously a useful resource in terms of yeah. learning about what's happening elsewhere. And that's gone up ten pounds. I'm, I'm not sure if this year the system has changed or the discussion on the new system will be in next year but they are changing the system by which they do it which is deeply technical and no one quite understands it except the guy who worked it out um, I, I don't think from what I recall it really made much difference to us either way even if it does make a difference to us we're talking small sums in our yeah. context mm. so, uh, okay uh, we have an acknowledgement and a thank you from the air ambulance. Yes, series. yes, they said thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Much appreciated. And the same with the world and the first responders. The they were very grateful for the donation. Excellent. Um, working party reports. Uh, the caretaker. Caretaker. Um, after my I attended Knardington's annual parish meeting, which was directly after ours last month, I gave a short report. And they're very grateful there for all the work that we do. And we've also been invited to wear forms, which is next Monday. Excellent. Anybody, any further comments? No, I've yet to meet up. I'm looking forward to that. But all I can say is the evidence is that he does a very good job. Mm -hmm. And I think, Yvonne, you said you, you want to get a working party together anyway. Yes, we need to get yes. a uh, finance. Now, um, we've had some details yes. circulated, yes. yes. We've had the, first mm -hmm. of all, we got the usual ones. Yes. If you remember, last month, um, I haven't had the Lloyds Bank reconciliation, so I put in what I'd hoped, but unfortunately, it seems to take ages for the direct debits to go through. So where I had put in that we had with our direct debit, we didn't. So I've had to change that. So you've got a new, a new one. Yeah. Can I ask which which sheet that is? Uh, that's. Um, I've got I've got a budget statement, a caretaker, a receipts and payments and reserves. No, it's on my sent it yeah. yeah. today. Yeah. One that came in, I only did it this afternoon. Monthly transaction statements. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So Came in. Two twenty-eight in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, in that case, I haven't seen it. It came in two twenty-eight this afternoon. Sorry, oh, I should just have a sneak peek at yours then. On the April one. Mm -hmm. no, there were two.
two. What appears on one must appear on the other, doesn't it? Yes. There were two pension payments under the caretaker scheme, but I couldn't see that on the monthly transaction scheme on um, page. You're right, they're not on. Well, Sally's good at this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, only because I just can't get my head round this. <laughs> mm. I've only got one on. No, I've got two. Hey, hey. You see, April, because it was late tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't it was late. It was a Lloyd's statement. I've got that one and that one. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the last page, I've got two. Yeah. 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 And then um, I couldn't see nest on here. Didn't go, it oh, just yes. comes through right this. at the top. Yeah. Oh, right, that's, that's where I had the problem. Right, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because I went through it and I kept it. This was so problematic <laughs> on the bank statement and it never appeared. Yes, no. it's. Mm. I have to try and get do the run, run the payroll before I really need to, mm -hmm. so that this direct debit goes through. So. And then, of course, I don't get the statement like I get the others. So apart from that, is everybody happy? Yeah. Yes. Um, we've obviously had the preceptor in. That came in on the last day. <laughs> I've had um, deed of exclusive right of burial for the hopes. That's payment in advance. They've booked their cremated remains plot. Thank you, Spence. Cremated remains, yes. Oh, okay. Right. Not a problem down there. So, um, if everybody's happy, I need you to yes, sign the roll, please. Turn your life away. Mm. And then, uh, 14. Uh, I'm just going to raise a point yes. that, uh, that I, I didn't know whether I should have raised it at matters arising, because in the previous months the last minute so there was a suggestion that we provide the clerk with a, um, a plastic card mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was going to be taken at this meeting um, and I just uh, the idea was a prepaid card that you yes yes I know what, on, yes, on so what you mean how, how do we I mean um, I think can we not take it as a decision well, to go ahead from a practical point of view I think to be well, it depends what everybody else like the plastic version of the Yes, I know. It's just that I suppose I'm not terribly happy. Oh, okay. I think that was the decision, wasn't it? We did talk yes. about it. Yeah. Um. Oh, well, listen, it's very simple. If you're not happy with it, I'm withdrawing the suggestion. <laughs> I mean, life's too short to. Yes, yeah, I know it would probably make it easier, but. I, 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 I would suggest it's up to you. It's another account to keep. Well, all you'd be doing is, is any, if, you, if it was petty, if you have a petty cat tin, yeah, you'd so still have to account for that. Right? Yes, yeah, so we, we, so we don't go down that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then we just need to ask you to keep on paying for it yourself and then reimbursing it. And if you're happy to do that, then. Yes, end thank of, you. End of suggestion. I'll tell you what, you can amend the financial regulations. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm on Sally's 10 years' time, the village of a different committee. <laughs> Okay. Can I just ask, has the money gone back into the savings account that you have to pull out? In order no, not yet. That's something that will be done this well now. Okay. Yes, that's good. Yes, yes. That's good. Mm. yes, I have to work out. We've now got 17,000. I did think, as others may have noticed, that it's, it's instructive how much interest we're getting from CCLA. Mm. I mean, mm. it's actually a significant sum, yeah. mm. even to the council. Which is uh, which is a, a good reason for having our account, having our finances in good order. Yep. Just to reinforce that, on, on the experience of on your suggestion, indirectly because you recommended that, the charity I chair, we put a hundred thousand pounds into the CCLA mm. because we were getting three and sixpence a year from yeah, of course. I don't know now West or somewhere like that. I mean, mm. it's, it's extraordinary mm. that the what used to be called the main high street banks mm. are offering these mm. not yes. a few. You know, whereas you can get, you know, on a cash IC, you can get 5% over a year with no withdrawal penalties. I don't know. Yeah. You know but uh, no, it's very pleasing that CCLA is doing mm. a good job. Long way at last. Right, now we're on to the um, next one. So the one, the sheet, you're on to the ones now, Paul, that you were talking about. Yeah, I've downloaded them now. So, <laughs> so you've got the 
the budget statement is the one that, that, that looks like this, yeah. that the scribe yeah. comes up with, which gives your figures, mm -hmm. the budgeted amounts. Um, I have now incorporated, um, Jeremy, please see, I hope he's noted, I put the caretaker scheme into it into now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's all, all there. Um, I mean, you've been able to see, because we do this every quarter, you've been mm -hmm. able to see how we've been going with the, with the budget figures. Mm -hmm. Things where we've um, gone over. Mm -hmm. no. Can I ask what okay. is Waverley Rent? Waverley, Waverley Rent is the electricity poles that we have on the Village Green. Well, we get paid okay. by the <laughs> UK power networks for having them on there. Well, not the Village Green, but the oh, sorry, sorry, oh, Memorial Garden. Memorial Garden. Yeah. That's the correct word, yes. Yes, I think it's the same each year now, it doesn't seem to increase. So, but it's down to zero. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, because well, it's one of those things. Can I guarantee we can get it? Okay. Possibly. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm. The income is always. It's the same with when it comes to burials. We can't. How can I budget for what we're going to come in with burials? It's just such a big unknown. So we can never be sure mm. on that one either. So it always comes out as a. And anything we get for burials goes in effectively into a reserve anyway. Yes, because we will spend yeah. when we do eventually are allowed to do the cemetery. Mm. Yes, I did. Because I can go, I've got records going back to when I was clerk first time round, back in the 1980s, and we actually had a separate burial book, book. account mm. with burial things. Obviously, sometime in between, they incorporated it into the sure. main one, but it was actually a separate book and everything. Mm. And which, this is the third of four quarters, is it? Oh, this is the final. This is the final. final. This mm -hmm. is the end of the year. Yes, yeah, so you look all your figures at the end, you know, like this one, it's the same <coughs> as the one you've got on the receipts and payments <coughs> account. Mm -hmm. So the receipts and payments account is one that is, which is this one, which is one that I produced myself because um, Scribe has bits in it that don't really make sense. So I just produced it and in sort of, Order so that you can see where the most money goes, where the most where it comes in. So everything on there is it's either on there yeah, or there. Yeah, it's, right. every, it's everywhere. You right. can look all over the place. <laughs> Which I picked them off to you, yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't find. I think that's under sundry. It's four two two point eight two. I couldn't yeah. find that on here. Well, that probably th this is where the scribe is a bit difficult because I have to put scribe things into all these different things. So it'll be under miscellaneous, it'll be under sundries. That's why on the on the one we've got here, I've mm -hmm. listed them so you can see exactly what they are. Right. So you should be able to pick them out. But the fact that the totals are the same, they've yeah, got to be. Yeah. they has got, got to, to be, be in there somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, mean, I can give you loads. I can all the things yeah. to you saying. You're going to pick it all out. <laughs> the safest <laughs> check is down the bottom here. The gross total of the yeah. receipts and payments yeah. are the same, which are both 70 odd thousand, yeah. are, are the same numbers as appear on the bottom of the finally. Yeah, no, I'll, I won't distinguish I'll show you your walking tomorrow, Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> But just you know, a, a small thing, re reverting to the way you use, that you do have an actual figure of £44.34, mm -hmm. which doesn't show... It does, it comes as uh, income halfway down the scribe one, £44.34. Yeah, I know, I know that's where I saw the figure, oh, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't appear on, on this sheet. Income. Uh, it's ah, it's okay, down but two up from the bottom of income. Waley 4434. Yes, it's just been put up, yeah. It's just I need to. I don't want to raise any more. No. That's what I say. It's from the Mobile Reach. Yes. Is there a document or. Oh my god, yes. Old stuff. When do we increase it? I did have correspondence when they did say that they wouldn't be increasing it anymore. That's why I say I don't think we're. 
Don't be rigid anymore. But I've, yeah. I've actually got a poll. Yes. Mine goes up every year, but, yes. a, but a matter of pence. It's mm. not. Yeah, but it is going in the right direction. <laughs> it's not the I mean, <laughs> it's, mm. I just wondered that UK yeah. power might be forthcoming with a. If, it, if it's been 40, what is it, 44 pounds 34 for oh, years and years it. and years. I and and I did, this is a complete shock that you were the parish clerk in 1980, in the 1980s. <laughs> I didn't know that. I mean, you must have the most enormous wealth of knowledge. <laughs> and I know they didn't have a prepaid card back then. <laughs> no. Right, right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, so, so yeah, I need you to sign things, but Richard, I want to go on to the plan comes to next yeah. reserves, because that's something we have to agree. Yeah. Right, so this is where we break it all down. So you've got the total bank balance, and then obviously we can't spend what's in the caretaker account, because we keep that separate. And then what we've held in the burial account, which is worked out underneath. I add in, I have a figure, and then I add in the fees each year. Um, and then we have the reserves, which we have always put money aside for and kept so that when we have things come up, we've got money there. In the churchyard maintenance, that was when we've had trouble with the wall and that sort of thing. Um, we've still got, still got um, 1,425 for the churchyard repair of the wall. It's left over. Memorial cleaning. And the pond project was the one that is one that I was mentioned, um, the popular train field pond. And the water supply, which has never been um, charged. In effect, that. John, I think the best way of thinking of this, it, it's only a memorandum, it's nothing formal, mm -hmm. but it explains by dividing up why it is we've got a lot of money in the bank. Because it's all because we might need it for this, because we might need it for that, or indeed when we need it for this, and when we need it for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, when we went down to the cemetery extension, we've got things that we might have to pay, but we've also got money in the burial accounts that can offset that. But obviously, we can't use the burial plots that I've been paid for in advance. Yeah. People might want to refund, I've had that in the past, mm -hmm. so we can't obviously use. Mm. And we have the three thousand yeah. pounds for the legacy, or we um, our for mm. topsoil and stuff. So yeah. we've already spent thirty pounds of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then thinking of things like the highway, the gateways yeah. that we've already been told that we're going to have to pay for. Which, if you take all those things out, the spare money that we sort of got mm. is is just under thirty thousand. Mm. Mm. And they say that you should have your precept, you know, sort of held mm. for contingencies, yeah. stuff like that. Mm. I see the path and play area, a capital project. Mm. That's something that might then be reimbursed through the reimbursed through the S one S. Yes, we could. Yeah. The path the path this actual path is the one from the hairdresser from the memorial garden down to the hairdressers, that's the one that we've been we because we knew that, that yes, we won't get that for no, one but, at six. But we knew we would have to pay for we'd that, pay so for that's it. why that one's it's, there, yeah. it's that path rather mm -hmm. than any path in the sure. um, okay. Okay. So that's that one. Okay. Um, then we come down to the caretaker scheme. Well, at the moment I'd like you just to look at the end of your statement because I want to have the budget needs to be looked at. I need to have this is why I want to have a um, Caretaker working party uh, get together so that we can look at that. Yeah. But obviously, the end of year is as. <coughs> this is where we're showing a deficit on the account. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So we're just it's talking about. about Have not paid us any more as their contribution. 
since 2012 when they first mm -hmm. yeah, it's always been fixed. agreed those signs? It, it started off, in all honesty, it started off pretty generous and of course inflation has just gradually nibbled away at it, uh, along with the fact that we've given quite good uh, increases. Mm -hmm. So I think if we do have a working party, I mean, we should consider approaching Ashford for some well, I think it has to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if everybody's happy, um, Lots of different spreadsheet type things. Are you still doing scribe training? Um, yes, they've got to, actually they've got something that I wanted to go to tomorrow, but obviously I'm walking, so I said I couldn't. But they're going to record it, and he's going to let me have a copy of the recording. That's good. That's on uh, websites and the new website and things like that. Mm. Coming on, but they are they good? They're very helpful if they're all for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron, for all that. There's a lot of work in there. Well done. And mm. it's really excellent to make some good hands. Um, <coughs> planning decisions. Uh, well, the Oxnail barn appeal was dismissed. Mm -hmm. And obviously the um, sounds good. And the one that's mm. just come in. Sounds good food. Mm. Um, open spaces. Well, Annie's not here, but okay. unless I anyone else is aware of anything else. Mm. Um, highways. Well, there's a general blitz in certain parts of Kent to try and get rid of some money that, that, that it's a bizarre situation when they haven't got any money but they're trying to get everything done mm. this summer which makes sense because the weather's better to, be, mm. to, to mm. do it um, and we did at the meeting that Mike Hiller um, uh, attended um, we mentioned to him if he could speak to his opposite number or, or contact the other side of the, the border because the road going into Ivan from, from here it's just a complete nightmare. It seems to be get, getting worse. It now, it now makes the people saying, oh, it's now not worth going that way. Go up to Jensen's mm -hmm. and, and then come up eventually through the street. Well, that's only increasing traffic. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's been a few people saying, oh, we, we did that. And, and, and it was school collection time, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it, mm -hmm. that's not going to change. But I think that um, after, the, after the huge hole, Everything else seems relatively small, obviously. Um, the, uh, the other piece is that, as my understanding is that we're, we're moving forward with the speed changes in Peeling Quarter. Well, we haven't had any more since no. the design. Uh, design, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're, they're charged us for it, haven't well, they? They, 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 they pay paid for it, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it just seems that, I mean, I, I try and keep on top of the map that's issued, but that's done so uh, late in the day and it's, and it's a blooming difficult one to yeah. and we had all the confusion of the three days for connecting a new water supply to was that the the, to the sand school <laughs> um, why only three days and of course they're, they're of course a bit of one locally realises that it's not complete so they just drove around it right and, uh, and that was um, an interesting challenge but the, 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 the signage wasn't, wasn't clear but, but these are things that I'm just passing on the comments that have been made. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, I, I, I'm not sure what else we can do. Um, you, you try and warn people on next door as soon as you get notification. But it seems that you're not getting, the level, you're not getting notification properly anymore. No, they, they, I don't know how and then when I do, when I do, it's for two or three days before from whenever. Yeah. You know, so I'm not getting the, the one thing that someone did suggest is that, that um, uh, you're, you're very familiar with the local place names, and most of the people in the village 
aren't. So if you say Blackwall Bridge or what have you, they think it's something up at the Thames, as someone said to me. And the suggestion was made, um, use the three words, um, because that's down to a metre. And more and more people are requesting that now. The delivery people ask you now to put the what three words in so they don't have any excuse of giving a package down the road. And maybe that's something that we could suggest to the sake of yeah. highways that they you know, because it's exactly yeah, some things they are using them on. I can't remember yes, I've seen yeah. them. Well, when I reported <coughs> even five, six years ago, well, was before COVID, just before COVID, that the road outside our house had sunk. And it was getting progressively week by week, you know, lorries were basically, and, it, and, it, and you could hear a huge clunk. And I said to the lady I reported to at, at uh, Highways, who was very, very efficient, this is five or six years ago, I said, do you use what three words? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, I, I, I reported the, the what three words, and that went into the system. And funny enough, it was repaired within 48 hours, which was quite mm-hmm. impressive. I've got that. I've got, I've got uh, what three words on the phone too. I have to say though, having driven to Canterbury this week and the Isle of Wight, I think the roads within five miles of Lisham are the worst mm. I've seen. Mm. It's like this little corner uh, has been totally forgotten. Well, mm. the border of mm. both counties mm. again. You probably think we're in Sussex. Yeah, but yeah. not the Sussex. Not the Sussex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I did say to Catherine Brown, who's a farm next door to us, and when I walked up the track with yet another parcel that seems to arrive on our doorstep, I said, I have to say that your, your track is probably the, the best <laughs> road. <laughs> up, up, up. And she said, the second best road surface. I said, where's the, where's the best one, shit? Tesco car park. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's a dream to drive along. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's just extraordinary what they've done. The yeah. point just to raise is that after we heard from um, Mike Hill uh, at the annual parish meeting, and I sent the stuff off to him that we promised about the area in front of the church. Mm. Don't think we've heard of Dicky no, Wright, have we? No, I've got to chase it. It might be worth you chasing yeah, it, or maybe, you, or maybe you do if you come across him at all. No. No, you don't? Okay. No. Hmm. Um, <coughs> thank you. Um, public right of ways, he just knows his old cotton mud about. Well, I hope he's drying out. Mm. Um, it was better. It was better yeah. last week till today. The second footpath down Swan Street. Yes. Is now so overgrown you wouldn't be able to walk through that today without getting soaking wet. That would not be Trevor. Mm. That one's the common problem, isn't it? It's one yeah, of which is one of the problems. Yeah. Trevor being. Trevor Bailey is my co um, pumpkin access. Yeah. Right, thank and you. And then, you know, when I say that we clear parts, we clear stalls, we. That's right. Um, he's retired now, so. Okay, oh, yeah. good service. Yes, he walks with, with us, so if you mention it to me. Actually, I'm not sure what it comes under either. On Poplar Road, the field, the house next to Mrs. Buxton, so that's either David Chesson's. Yes. Emptied out. One. You now have to duck. Yes. Under, have. Even if you're on the footpath, I've had the worst. I have. And the footpath I now only about that wide. I, mm. I have had a word about oh, it. Oh, right. Mm. I will have a word about mm. it. Well, it's very good then. Members of the council are regular walk. Did people notice that the tarmac got done outside taxis? I meant to. Yeah. When I saw Sorry. it, I, meant, I saw the work of that. It's when you were in France yeah. and I meant to say you were in When I reported it, it, it got painted up within a yeah. day and Dax was astonished. <laughs> and then it took about three months, but it did yeah. eventually get done. I, meant to well, say I was waiting for people to say, how come that's been done and this hasn't or that hasn't. Mm. Inevitable. Mm. Mind you, it's the most used piece. Mm. Okay, item G, Sanitary Churchyard. In the February meeting, we discussed writing to the public rights of way officer to put a sanitary sign on their public footpath sign. 
Oh yes, yeah, it's with, I haven't, I mean I can't see a problem, but it's actually doing the, um, going about doing the sign is the next. You'd better not have another poll, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, yes. we need a poll. Mm -hmm. can, no, you, can you buy these signs? That's what I said, I don't know. And then just bolt it on. Bolt it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just well, need their permission to put it on, don't we? Uh, yeah. Is there a department for bolting on a sign of permission? Okay. Well, no, it's... Yeah. <laughs> I will ask, um, I mean, I will ask him. And it, but don't it, get hit with a £1,000 design fee. No, <laughs> uh, because when we had the dog waste bin down yes. back street, I had to ask, in fact it was Malcolm then, because it's a public rights of waste okay. sign that we yeah. got there, mm -hmm. and he didn't see a problem with it. Yeah. As long as, should they need to do anything, we would need to move the... Yeah. the sign, you know, the So if we just way. ask, and then we'll just get and the keep sign. Keep it out of head height. We well, can't walk when path is anyway. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. <coughs> <Little signs. coughs> Need to be doing again the label on it. Mm -hmm. Done it twice. We were supposed to be getting the um, whatever they call it, the um, Wargrave sign as well. Yes, that's, that's not what it's right, is. Yeah. It? No, not yet. Mm -hmm. These things are exceptionally slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And anything else? <coughs> the same thing, I'll check out the soon now. Good, item 22, date of next parish council meeting. So we fix the usual second um, mm -hmm. Tuesday, 11th of June, 7 pm. Um, <coughs> items for information, anybody got anything that they feel we should be informed about? No. So mm. either it looks like Sue or Colin have. Pardon? I've just. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like the civil comedy. No. Which of you I, don't, I wish not to bring anything else up this evening. Are you going to keep it for a later date? <laughs> yes. Oh. The only thing I'd say is <laughs> the, compl <laughs> the complaints about the dustbin men. Bin men. Yes. They're horrendous in the village. Sure. I've been an awful lot at Moon's Green. Yeah, I've, I've been good because I've had um, yeah. I had somebody rang me up about it. Yeah. I've I've contacted Street Scene, which once again haven't come back to me. Yeah. But I copied Johnny in, in with it as well, and he said <coughs> thank you for doing it. He's on to it as well. Yes, good. So it is. He has uh, organised some. Miranda at Moon's Green did get a, um, an emptying sometime just before Friday when I asked, or Saturday when I asked her. <coughs> But I think that was after four weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I can't believe how, not that I've been in the industry for 20 mm -hmm. or 30 years now, but I can't believe how bad it's been. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we, we would have expected to have problems on a startup. Everybody yeah. does. Mm -hmm. And they last days, mm -hmm. really. You, you've got to be on top of it. Uh, I, can't, I can't imagine, unless Ashford are soft, that they haven't been kicking sewers to death over this. Mm -hmm. um, when, I, when I took over my the business in 92, they had started at Bromley in 89. Uh, Bromley is a very big area, 120,000 against Ashford about 60. And it was such a bad startup that my predecessor, the general manager, was banned from the council depot where our office and vehicles were. And they employed um, temporary staff to answer the phone for Bromley and charged for six weeks and charged him. <laughs> it was absolutely dire. Is but that was, that was that exceptional. Was really and it was the French because they were in partnership with Onyx. I think it's the majority of Because yeah, there was a whole yeah. pile. We walked mm -hmm. around Blackbrook last week yeah. and at the top of the track. Oh, yeah. Did they tell us? Yeah. Did anyone tell yes. them if the road was open properly? Because because th there was a problem when there was all that terrible rain and the diversion mm -hmm. in the big hole and getting the lorries down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hesitate to, to say that. I was about to say how wonderful they were. I was concerned on Monday because they were 10 minutes late. 
They were all a bit later on. Oh, yeah, they arrived at five to seven. <laughs> um, the thing that really is irritating is they haven't published the calendar yet. Mm. Because I, you know, I, I just have to keep on double checking that which bin goes out, you know. And by the time I go and put them out, I can't see the colour of the one down the road. <laughs> you, you, um, you but, but they've been, they've been fine. You, you got five to seven. Yeah. I got twenty past three. That's a well, that's a lot earlier than me then. Yeah. Mind you, I did pass your wife yesterday, and she was looking in the bin, and I said, you mustn't put Colin in there. And she said, no, I've had a word with him. <laughs> the distance between your place and my place. But I, I was astonished yesterday. I was travelling down um, Swan, Swan Street, uh, around that way, and I was following a smaller dust car. Yes. There was one man driving and getting up, yeah. and there was a bin... In, so obvious beside the road, right. and he was picking it up and editing yeah. it. So, something logistically has seriously gone wrong if they're missing. This is the problem we had last week. We all had our bins out mon- uh, Monday night for Tuesday, mm-hmm. and they were still, they didn't collect them till Friday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so what's, the, what's the normal day for you then? Tuesday, Tuesday now. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. You're still Monday, aren't you? We're Monday. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't think they did themselves any favours. They, 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 they collected two or three houses at the top of the road, yeah. but because they had this silly little one, they couldn't get any more in, so they just drove off. We all I had to complain. It's part of the problem. I've noticed also that the ones that do us are quite big ones, but there's only a driver and one crew. They always used to have. Yeah, it used to be three. It used to be three driving two yeah. crew. But they've, they've lost a crew member. And mm-hmm. I thought the whole issue was based on them two being all the staff over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if they've got, if they've lost one third of their. Yeah. their According company. to Johnny, when he was having a go at the officers about three or four weeks ago, maybe more than that now, um, because the wagons weren't big enough, and I don't know how they made that miscalculation, and they're owned by Ashford now, not Suez, mm. um, uh, he said that they'd had to order more trucks. And I mean, that absolutely <laughs> throws their budget. Because a bin wagon in 1992, a bit bigger than these maybe, would have been 80,000, 90,000. Mm. Now, add 30 years worth of inflation. They are that seriously that's expensive. Just, yeah, that's just one man getting out, yeah. driving. Yeah. Yeah. Systematic with quite a lot of things happening in Ashford. But this yeah. is this is disastrous. Mm. And, and the trouble is, if it's gone this badly wrong, and it, of course it has and it is, they're chasing their tail all the time. Mm. And it's how do you deal with the wood for the trees? They can't get onto their schedule because they're still messing about with the fact that they're not on their schedule. Schedule, that's right. And, and missing bins, I mean, we used to get penalised heavily for mis- financially for missed bins. <laughs> And you really do aim to, to avoid them, you know, maybe a dozen a day out of your 40,000, no, 60,000 houses in Ashford, so, you know, you can work it out yourself. A dozen a day is very, very few, and you still don't like it. If they are doing 100 or 1,000 a day, missed, they're just completely screwed. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there was a bit of a cover-up going on in Ashford by the council. Oh, you know, because they've left a contract yeah. with holes in it, and uh, we'll never find out. That but Suez yeah. had the job, I know the managers may have gone, but Suez had the job before, they were called CETA then, yeah. Suez had the job before Biffa. I mean, they only just switched back and forth. Um, but I think the value of going for these wagons changed the whole schedule. Yeah and deciding to do, instead of uh, one week black, one week green, mm-hmm. splitting it half and half, that also changed the schedule, yeah. and they've made a complete mess of it. Anyway, ours is fine. If Yvonne <laughs> wants to raise well, we're further we're point. Can I just, could you let me know when you're away, please, so that I'm not sending out, asking you to do things when there's no chance of you doing it. Nothing bought at the minute. Sorry? Nothing bought at the moment.